Welcome to Elid Storytelling Time. Title Uncut an Anthology, Episode 4 from Robinson 1958 by Muriel Spark. To teach a cat to play ping pong, you have first to win the confidence and approval of the cat. Bluebell was the second cat I had undertaken to teach. I found her more amenable than the first, which had been a male. Ping pong with a cat is a simplified and more individualistic form of the proper game. You play it close to the ground and you imagine the net. Gaining a cat's confidence is different from gaining the confidence of any other animal. Food is not the simple answer. You have to be prepared to play with it for as long as two hours on end to gain the initial interest of a cat. I always place a piece of paper over my head and face and utter meows and other cat noises. This is irresistible to most cats who come nosing up to see what is going on behind the paper. The next phase involves soft whispering alternately with a whistling of a high-pitched tunes. I thought Bluebells of Scotland would be appropriate to Bluebell. She was enchanted. It made her purr and rise on her hind legs to pull my shoulder as I crouch on the patio whistling to her in the early afternoons. After that, I began daily to play with her, sometimes throwing the ping pong ball in the air. She often lived beautifully and caught it in her forepaws. By the second week in June, I had so far won her confidence and approval as to be able to make fierce growling noises at her. She liked this very much and would crouch menacingly before me, springing suddenly at me in a mock attack. Sometimes I would stalk her, one slow step after another, bent double and with glaring eyes. She loved this wildly, making flying lips at my downtrust head. You'll get a nasty scratch one day, said Robinson. Oh, I understand, cats, I said. Robinson's walked away. Having worked round Bluebell to a stage where she would let me do nearly anything with her and play rough house as I please. I got an old carton out of the Robinson storehouse and set it on and against the patio wall. Bluebell immediately sat herself inside this little three-walled house. Then the first ping-pong lesson began. I knelt down two yards away from her and placed the ball in front of me. She crouched in readiness as if it were an ordinary ball game. With my middle finger and thumb, I pinged the ball into Bluebell, Bluebell's backs. It bounced against the walls. The cat sprang at it and bat it back. I sent it over again to Bluebell. This time she caught it in her forepaws and curled up on the ground, biting it and kicking it with her silver hind pads. However, for a first lesson, her style was not bad. Within a week, Bluebell had got the ping pong idea. Four times out of ten, she would send the ball back to me, sometimes batting it with her hind leg most comically, so that even Michael Miguel had to laugh. On the other occasions, she would appropriate the ball for herself, either dribbling it right across the patio or patting it under her body and then sitting on it. Sometimes she would pat the ball only a little way in front of her, waiting for me with her huge green eyes to come and retrieve it. The cat quickly discovered that the setting up of her carton on the patio 
was the start of the ping pong game and she was always waiting for me at that spot after lunch. She was an encouraging pupil, an enthusiast. One day when she was doing particularly well and I was encouraging her with my lion growl to her great excitement, I heard Robinson's voice from the back of the house. Bluebell, pussy puss, bluebell. Nice puss, come on. Her ear twitched very slightly in response, but she was at the ball and patting it over to me. It seemed in one movement I cracked it back and she fought again. Bluebell, where's the cat? said Robinson, appearing on the patio just as I was growling more. There's a mouse in the storehouse. Do you mind? he said. He said to me. The cat had her eyes on my hand, which held the ball. I picked her up and handed her to Robinson. Bluebell struggled to free herself and go for the ball. I thought this funny and giggled accordingly. But Bluebell was borne reluctantly away by solemn Robinson, with Miguel following like a righteous little retainer. Jimmy grinned. Something about Jimmy's green and Robinson's bearing embarrassed me. I began to wonder if Robinson's felt intensely about incidents like this. I should not myself have thought of the affair as an incident at all. It was a great bore. The End